course, uh, as it gets closest to Earth, that will be on December 19th, we'll have the best opportunity to use the hundreds of telescopes on Earth and the Hubble and Webb Space Telescopes to get our best uh, data on it. So, as far as I can... December 19th, 2025. In 12 days, 3i Atlas reaches its closest approach to Earth, and the object everyone dismissed as just a comet is doing something comets don't do. A sunward anti-tail extending 60,000 kilometers, five times Earth's diameter, pointing directly at the sun while the object moves away from it. A color shift from red to green to electric blue as it retreats into cold space when it should be fading to gray. And methanol to hydrogen cyanide ratios of 124 point... One, chemistry so extreme it's only been seen once before in the strangest comet ever recorded. NASA calls it natural. Avi Loeb calls it a friendly gardener seeding life or a serial killer spreading poison. If you've been watching 3i Atlas and something about the official story doesn't sit right, you're not alone. Hit subscribe now, drop a like, and let's break down the Hubble images they're not explaining, the radio signals they're downplaying, and the heavy particle debris that shouldn't be there, because in 12 days we get our last clean look at this thing before it vanishes forever. Let's start with the visual evidence everyone's trying to ignore. On November 30th, 2025, Hubble captured 3i Atlas at 0.04 arc seconds per pixel, the highest resolution image we've ever gotten of this object, and it shows something that should not exist, a clear, distinct anti-tail extending over 60,000 kilometers toward the sun. In standard comet physics, anti-tails are optical illusions. When Earth crosses a comet's orbital plane, we see both sides of the dust trail at once, creating the appearance of material pointing sunward. But that's a perspective trick. The material isn't actually moving toward the sun, it just looks that way from our angle. 3i Atlas? This is persistent. It showed the same sunward extension in the July Hubble image. After perihelion, the anti-tail reversed direction relative to the comet's motion. Avi Loeb's analysis is blunt. This phenomenon is not normal in familiar comets and needs to be explained. Here's what makes it impossible to dismiss. The anti-tail always points at the sun, regardless of the object's motion. That's not how solar wind works. The solar wind is a 400 km per second blast of charged particles that strips material away from the sun. Comet tails point away. Ion tails, dust tails, both follow the same rule. Material flows with the wind, not against it. But 3i Atlas is showing a lance, a narrow, focused jet spearing directly into the solar wind. Amateur astronomer Michael Yeager captured side-by-side -side comparisons with normal comets. Comet Lemon, a typical solar system visitor, shows two tails, one dust, one ion, both swept backward by solar pressure. 3i Atlas shows the same two tails plus this sunward spike that has no natural explanation. Loeb's paper predicted this. Before the November 30th image was even taken, he calculated that if 3i Atlas released a swarm of macroscopic objects near perihelion, they would separate from the nucleus by roughly 60,000 kilometers by late November. The Hubble image confirms it exactly. That's not a lucky guess. That's predictive modeling. When 3i Atlas first appeared, it was red. Deep, dark red, the color of an object baked by cosmic rays for millions of years. Standard for interstellar travelers, as it approached the sun, it turned green. Diatomic carbon cyanogen, molecules vaporizing under solar heating, rare but natural. Now, as it speeds away from the sun, retreating into the cold, it's glowing electric blue. That's the part nobody's explaining. Blue light is high energy. On Earth, you see it in lightning, nuclear reactors, the hottest flames. In space, blue means ionized gases, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, burning at extreme temperatures. But here's the problem. 3i Atlas is moving away from the heat source. It passed perihelion. The sun's intensity is dropping every second. The object should be cooling. The outgassing should be slowing. The glow should be fading back to red or gray. Instead, the blue is intensifying. That implies an internal energy source. One theory, the sun stripped away the ancient red crust, exposing pristine ice from another star system, a fresh surface we've never seen before. Possible, but it doesn't explain why the blue persists as the object cools. 
Another theory, the one that keeps researchers awake, the blue isn't just chemistry, it's exhaust. If 3i Atlas used the sun for an Oberth maneuver, a gravity assist boost amplified by firing engines at closest approach, the blue glow could be the afterburn of a propulsion system still active as the object accelerates outward. That's speculative, but the color sequence, red, green, blue, feels systematic, like stages, like ignition. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array ALMA has been analyzing the gas cloud surrounding 3i Atlas, and the results are shocking. Massive quantities of methanol, CH3OH, and hydrogen cyanide, HCN. These aren't random molecules. They're prebiotic compounds, building blocks for amino acids, adenine, a DNA base, and the organic chemistry necessary for life. Here's the kicker. The methanol to hydrogen cyanide ratio is 124.1. That's astronomically high. The only other comet with a remotely similar ratio was C2016R2, one of the most chemically bizarre objects ever recorded. But C2016R2 came from our solar system. 3i Atlas came from somewhere else. Avi Loeb poses the question directly. Is this object a serial killer, bringing poison, or a friendly gardener? Hydrogen cyanide is deadly, yes. But in cosmic terms, it's a starter kit. Methanol is a fundamental ingredient for life. It's found in star-forming regions, in protoplanetary disks, in the atmospheres of moons like Titan. Microorganisms on Earth use methanol as their sole energy source. Plants produce it naturally from cell wall breakdown. If 3i Atlas is a panspermia vessel, a natural comet carrying the ingredients of life, its chemistry makes sense. But the specific also this ratio, the venting pattern, and the directional jets suggest something more controlled. If you were designing a probe to seed worlds, you'd load it with prebiotic molecules, protect them in a frozen shell, and release them after solar heating activated the payload. You'd aim the dispersal using directional jets. You'd leave heavy particles that resist solar wind and settle into stable orbits. That's exactly what we're seeing. On November 10th, the Meerkat radio telescope in South Africa detected emissions from 3i Atlas at 1665 and 1667 megahertz. The internet exploded. It's phoning home. It's a beacon. The official explanation, hydroxyl radicals. OH molecules breaking down under sunlight. Natural, expected, boring. But here's the detail they buried. The signal is steady. Normal cometary radio noise bursts and fades as the object rotates. Active vents turn toward and away from Earth, creating fluctuations. 3i Atlas, constant hum. If it's natural outgassing, it means the venting is perfectly distributed across the surface, or the rotation is so fast the signal averages out. If it's artificial, a steady carrier wave is exactly what you'd expect from a running system, standby mode, a relay. No one's calling it alien, but no one's explaining why it doesn't fluctuate either. Here's the part that shifts from strange to deliberate. 3i Atlas is shedding pebbles, not fine dust, gravel, particles too large to be blown away by solar radiation pressure. Fine dust gets swept out of the solar system by sunlight. It's gone in weeks. Heavy particles? They stay. They settle into orbits. They become part of our system. Why does that matter? Because if you're seeding a solar system, you don't use a spray. You use heavy seeds that linger long after you've left. Seeds that future planets might encounter. Seeds that could survive atmospheric entry and deposit their cargo on a surface. The timing is what makes it suspicious. 3i Atlas dumps this material after surviving the sun, after the sterilization of perihelion, after the heat, after the closest approach. It's almost as if the sun was the trigger. I have arrived. I am warm. Release the payload. Are these dormant biological packages? Are they geological samples designed to drift until something finds them? Or are they just rocks? 3i Atlas is on a hyperbolic orbit, too fast to be captured by the sun. It's just passing through, but the way it's passing through is making orbital dynamicis nervous. The object shows non-gravitational acceleration. Comets do this naturally. Outgassing creates thrust, but that thrust is usually chaotic. It tumbles the comet. It's messy. 3i Atlas is smooth, the acceleration is consistent, and those jets, the anti-tail pointing at the sun, act like stabilizers, keeping the object oriented. 
Loeb suggested months ago that if this were artificial, it might use the sun for a gravity assist boost. Dive deep, fire engines at closest approach, slingshot out with maximum velocity. 3i Atlas dove deep. It survived proximity that should have torn a rubble pile apart. It didn't disintegrate, it brightened, it shifted color, and it came out with a trajectory that's slightly off from a purely gravitational curve. Is it correcting its course, or is it just trying to leave as fast as possible? In 12 days, 3i Atlas reaches 1.8 astronomical units from Earth, roughly 269 million kilometers. Far, but within range of every major telescope on and off the planet. James Webb is watching. Hubble is watching. Every radio dish that can tilt will point at that blue dot. What are we looking for? The hull. That glowing coma, the gas and dust, is also a curtain. It wraps the nucleus in fog thousands of kilometers thick. We know it's big, maybe five kilometers wide, but we can't resolve the shape. Is it a jagged rock? Or is it smooth? Cylindrical? On December 19th, the angle changes. The sun illuminates it from the side. We might see through the thinning tail. We might catch the shadow of the nucleus. If the shell cracks, if the gas clears, we'll know. After that, the door closes. By March 2026, it crosses Jupiter's orbit. By the early 2030s, it's a ghost in the outer dark, leaving forever. Here's the terrifying part. It's not stopping. It's not slowing. It's not hailing us. It's doing what scouts do. Map, sample, mark, move. If those heavy particles are markers, if that anti-tail is a relay, if that blue glow is an engine still running, then we've just been cataloged. The friendly gardener hypothesis, it brought life. The serial killer hypothesis, it brought poison. The scout hypothesis, it brought data back to someone else. What do you think 3i Atlas really is? Natural comet, panspermia vessel, or something we're not ready to name? Drop your theory below. Subscribe so you don't miss the December 19th data. And share this, because in 12 days we either get answers or we watch it disappear into the dark forever.